because life is benevolent. What my mom was, what my father was, will not determine who I am. I will choose yeah. what I want. That's just what's happening right now. Uh, inspiring people or making a difference and are talking about the positive side of things. About spiritual search. If you go deeper, if every time you're like, okay, but where, what's behind that? What's at the core of that thing? Even if at the moment it seems like a mistake, later on it will make sense. That's from my perspective how it works. I enjoyed it. I didn't even notice it was an hour or more. Like, subscribe, and share. Hi, welcome in the new Spontaneous Conversations. It's number seven. And today we're talking with Leonard Bisquer. I hope I pronounced the name correctly. He is living in the Philippines and you can find his details in the description because he has his own YouTube channel, which is called Spontaneous Miracles. And actually he put it next to his name so you can see it at the bottom. My name is Lot Fimrat. And I have intuitive.me as website, as Facebook group, as YouTube channel. Uh, I think also Twitter, Instagram, so whatever. Just Google it, you'll find it. And there will be links in the description as well. And the beauty of spontaneous conversations is that in the moment we decide on the subject. So last, last week, no, beginning of this week we had a talk. And then we thought we would talk about something, but we were not sure. And now I just asked Leonard to feel in the moment. And yes, the subject changed. So, Leonard, please tell us something about yourself before you tell us the subject. Yeah. <laughs> Hi, my name is Leonard. And yeah, like what Lotfi said, I'm from the Philippines. And I, I, I write books, I edit videos, I post. Uh, stuff on my channel and that's just what's happening right now and I'm just enjoying the moment moment to moment <laughs> I yeah and the topic for today is about spiritual search <laughs> ah, I wanted to do the drum ah, sorry sorry <laughs> Fast. okay spiritual search okay so I would say Break away, spiritual search, what does it mean? No, because speaking from experience, it's that's the story of Leonard. From the like like what I was telling you last time when I was a kid, I I was so because I, I was I was raised Catholic. So in in, in a Catholic religion, the Bible, the rigid rules, the the many many commandments of god <laughs> in heaven <laughs> and if you don't follow the commandments you go to hell when you die the, the, when you were a kid you were fed those programs and then when i was a kid i saw this vcd of testimonials of people who died and they said they went to hell and and, and stuff <laughs> that was the beginning of my savior complex i was like i'm gonna save people from from going there because that I don't want that but not knowing that was trauma that was a childhood trauma then that began the the that was the one of the roots perhaps and then there's therapy <laughs> the therapy where they give you diagnosis of you have a disorder yada 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 this is <laughs> this is you have ADHD you have uh, social anxiety disorder OCD <laughs> And I was given a lot of diagnosis. <laughs> I was given a lot, a lot, lot, lot. <laughs> and uh, and it, it becomes a part of your identity. <laughs> it becomes your, who you are. <laughs> it, 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 you, you attach to it. Oh, this is me. This, I'm, I'm a flawed, I have this order. I need the, da, da, da. And then up until growing up, you you go to the spiritual search where you find answers of your past life origins and the that the new age light worker tribe which is nothing wrong i'm not <laughs> i am not in any way condemning that 
I I just think that it's I like the analogy set of toys. The source has this set of toys and it wants to play infinitely. So if one if it wants to play with religion, it will. But it, if it wants to play with therapy, it will. It, it's just playing a game. <laughs> But when you wake up from that dream, you realize it's just a dream. It's playing it. it to put it simply, the New Age religion and any kind of groups you belong to, it doesn't have any specialness to it. It's just a different perspective. <laughs> it's just uh, the source playing that set of toys. <laughs> you, 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 and, uh, you know, it, it, it's just simple as that but but when you look back at the spiritual search it was endless <laughs> maybe you can talk about yours too I, I don't know I, I it's it's just to me it's just it's fun when you look back at it it it's it's fun and it's tedious it's hard it's there's so much heavy work and then when you realize right now it it it's it's gone <laughs> it, it's just in the past <laughs> you're 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 here now <laughs> you're, you're, and the story of trauma is not here anymore <laughs> the story of who you are before is not who you are right now something like that <laughs> i don't know maybe you can share your story too of how the spiritual search was well through. i started laughing because yesterday mm -hmm. evening i watched an episode of young sheldon uh it's the younger version of sheldon from the big bang theory and it's really fun it's much nicer than the original series and this nine-year-old boy or eight-year-old boy um i don't know how but his mom is pushing him into religion and he says God doesn't exist. So the the pastor is asking him like, okay, but you're a science you're a science man because he's very smart. And so how can you say something doesn't exist if you haven't done research? But like, yeah, good point. So in one night he reread the whole Bible, and of course he had a lot of questions. And the next day he decided to do more research, not just one religion. So his mom freaked out. And he started to do all these religions. And in the end, he decided to create his own. <laughs> where uh, logic or something was, was a thing. And the only sin was stupidity. <laughs> because he's so smart and everyone else is stupid. And of course, he had only one, one boy who followed him, uh, which was the neighbor who is just saying yay on everything, who was like really super dumb. <laughs> So yeah, I had to think of that. And it was interesting because I also have been raised with uh, two religions and my mom told me also about other religions and she was not, not like, okay, the religion says this and God said that and it's all like this. When I was young, she told me at the age of five, I remember when she was reading to me the Bible, she told me, don't take this literally. Mm. Understand the message. And that stuck with me. And of course, at school, I was being hammered for saying such a thing because I was like, oh no, it's like this. And uh, so I got punished a few times for speaking my mind or for not wanting to learn by heart. Uh, I don't know how many pages of whatever book. No, I was, no, it doesn't resonate with me. And yeah, New Age came. And I had a phase where I was like, no, there is no God. And at a certain moment, I was feeling bad. So yeah, maybe there is a God. So maybe you should pray to him. You never know. And so in my early 20s, I went through this phase. And at a certain moment, I was invited by a friend of mine to, uh, to church. It was some, I forgot which, which one it was, one of those new ones. But there was a really nice pastor who was talking about life. It was not about you need to do this or that. He would just talk about life and how to deal with life. And that guy really inspired me and helped me actually resolve some issues I had. Uh, just through listening to his teachings. And then when that guy left, somebody else came. I just stopped going because that was somebody I thought he didn't resonate with. So I personally believe 
whether you get inspired, you follow, or you start to believe, it really depends on who's talking to you. Because yeah, somebody can come and force something on you, but that will not stick. It only sticks when you feel something. So a lot of people now I live in Romania, a lot of people have been brainwashed with the Orthodox Catholicism, um, Christianity. And most people don't go to church. They only go on Easter because for the Orthodox, Easter is more important than, uh, than Christmas. So clearly they like more the, the death part of Jesus than the birth part, which for me is ironic. Um, but that's it what people do. Okay, they baptize because people start to look at them strangely if they don't baptize their child. So that's just social pressure. It has nothing to do with believing. In their hearts, there's not much, 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 much belief. And that's because they were not inspired, at least the majority of them. Where I see, for example, I have been diving into the gene keys for several years now. And some people see it as a religion, just like human design or like astrology or numerology. But it's not. It's just teachings. Teachings about yourself, your life, how you can evolve, how you can grow, how you can have a more pleasant life, which religion is also about, and, but then religion is more, more focusing on the afterlife. So be a good slave now, and then you will be, be compensated later on. And, um, and so people, so go deep into that. And some do it because they're just searching. But I went quite deep because I resonated with the message and the person sharing it. That's very important. And so you feel something and so you dive into it. But then you don't stick with one thing. You don't have to. Because that means you have one perspective of the world. And that's it. It's like living, trying to live in 1D. But that's not possible. We live in 3D. So you can look at this thing. You can say it's rectangular. Now you say it's a circle. And when I hold it like this, you say, ah, it's a cylinder. So a lot of people don't think this far. Also because they've been taught not to think too much. Especially when it comes to religion, don't think, just obey. And that already should tell you something. That you're not allowed to question, to criticize. And I feel that this talk is not just about religion because we dove a lot into religion here, but religion has been what most people consider to be spirituality for a long time. But in the last 20 years, I know it's longer, but let's say for the last 20 years, since the early 2000s, people started to see something wider, more than just religion when it comes to spirituality. And since 2012, when the whole solar system entered the new space, uh, a new location in space, new zone with a higher frequency, vibrations started to, ray, to rise and people started to wake up and more and more people are waking up. And what you see is that people are searching and the new age is about it's you, it's within you, everything. I personally believe that it, it's a combination because if you'd go and sit alone in a room for the rest of your life, you would not really be happy and you would not be able to really further develop yourself pro profoundly. I mean, you, you're very limited on what you can actually do. You need the interaction with others to actually grow. And not just to look back at your, your old self, but also to learn from other people and to see what else is possible to, again, to get that other perspective on what is 
spirituality, what is personal development, what is happiness. Because happiness is not something you buy. Don't you go online on Amazon or on whatever website and you buy happiness. That's what marketing is telling you, what advertisement is telling you, but that's not it. Peace, peace of mind, calmness, joy, safety. It's not something you buy. Even if they, even if they literally tell you that you're buying these things when you buy that product, that's crap. That's bullshit. That's just them wanting to sell you something. And I heard a very nice thing. Advertisement is um, a lot of money spent to convince you to buy something that you don't need or that's not good for you. And I love that description. Because if you need something and it's really good, you don't need any advertisement. You will just go and get it. You will beg to be able to buy it. And that's why certain companies don't advertise because their products just sell themselves. Mm. And this is one of the things that I'm looking at now already for, for a while. When people come with certain things, I look at like, okay, are they trying to sell me something or are they just sharing? Because if they're trying to sell something, then it may be really bad. Otherwise, they wouldn't need to sell. When I was working in sales, I was not selling. I was just showing people who had the possibilities or recommending something based on what people said they needed. So they didn't feel I was selling anything to them. They just came to me like, hey, I have a need and I need to solve this problem. How do I do that? Well, here is one way and here's another way and then people would choose. And yes, I was considered to be a salesperson and a good salesperson, but I never felt like pushing something people didn't need. And that was something that I felt was integrity. So I literally sometimes refused a sale when I felt it was not a good thing to do or it would get the client in trouble. Except for once, and of course it backfired because I, I let the pressure of my boss push me in a certain direction. So I immediately the universe kicked me back like, Lotfi, what the hell are you doing? And for me, that is where spirituality is already entering in the daily life. Is listening to what you feel here. Is connecting with people. Like what you and I did beginning this week. We hadn't talked for several months. We reconnected, we had a talk. We talked from here, we listened to each other, we shared things. That's how we came to have this talk today. If there would not have been this connection, I would not have said, let's do a live or, or a recording together. And some people are like, yeah, you need to go out more and meet more people and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but I don't want the superficial crap. So when I go to networking events, I speak with a few people. There may be a hundred people walking around, but not going out and handing out business cards like flyers and whatever, or and talking to everyone, introducing myself. Hi, I'm not, I'm a coach. Or, I'm not, I'm do this. No, I meet people, we talk about stuff. And then after half an hour, maybe, what is it you actually do? <laughs> and sometimes we don't even know from each other what we do as professional money-making thing. But we know about each other's hobbies or what, what we're interested in, what, what, what's, what's our passion or the charity that we do a lot for or things like that. Because about connection. I mean, last time I was at an event and I spent the whole evening there and then I talked for half an hour with somebody to discover at, at the end of that half hour that actually that was the ambassador who was organizing the event. But I didn't know. <laughs> So I was making jokes about the Belgian people and there was a Belgian ambassador who was making jokes about the Dutch. So it was fine, but when I realized, I, oh, okay, I've been insulting his people. <laughs> but he was like, he was a super cool guy. But that's just to give you an idea that if you just connect with people. And spirituality is about connecting with the self and with the others, not only going inside and meditating eight hours a day and... Yeah, you can become a monk and do that, 
but a lot of monasteries, I say it like this because maybe they're not all living in monasteries, but a lot of, let's say, organizations for, for monks, they're also very interactive with society around them. They're not only sitting indoors and meditating. They're doing a lot of stuff like their own agricultural stuff, but often also commerce with, with the village next to them or the villages around them. So there's a lot of interaction because it's important. It's part of, of our development. And if spirituality would have been about just the, 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 the one person, then there would not have been a church, for example, where people come together or a mosque or a synagogue or whatever. So it is all about the interaction. But for me, the interaction has to come from here. And that's when you start to develop yourself. Because you come to get to know yourself. And there may be friction with people. You will feel uncomfortable. And that's how you actually start to evolve. So that is spirituality for me. Not the praying or what will happen after you die or if you can do telepathy or whatever stuff. Mm -mm. That's a mystical experience. And an experience is not spirit. Oh, no, no, no. Wait, wait. <laughs> I have to rephrase. You know the quote, we are not human beings having spiritual experience. We are spiritual beings having human experience. That, that I posted that before I deleted my old Facebook account. And I said, if that's the case, everything is spiritual. A garbage collector is spiritual. A Hollywood actor is spiritual. A grocery bagger is spiritual. A sales clerk is spiritual. And it's no different from the monk there. <laughs> it's no different from you channeling Bashar. <laughs> it's no different from anything. Or if you're praying in the mosque, because everything is spiritual. <laughs> you cannot exclude, you cannot just say, you are spiritual and this is not <laughs> because it's all spiritual experience it, it, it's not <laughs> you cannot judge that it's non-spiritual and this is not <laughs> it's inclusive heaven is inclusive <laughs> I, it, it it the illusion of separation is you know the mind that's the nature of the mind <laughs> it's trying to segregate people <laughs> but literally without without that label about spirituality everything is spiritual <laughs> everything is included it, it just depends on your preference if you want to play with that arena of channeling or predicting the future <laughs> then that's your game oh but good luck with that now person, i just don't want to play that game i but but i have no more baggage to <laughs> Unlike last year, I have baggage about that because it's instilling fear. It's like saying your li the limited mind is outsmarting the universe. To me, no one can outsmart the universe because how can you how can your limited mind conceive the miraculous universe? But that's not limiting because you are beyond it. But you you cannot I cannot explain it in words, but. I just don't like playing the games of people prophesizing. <laughs> if, if, if that's their game, I respect it. It's their rights. <laughs> you have the right to play the game you want to play, but it's not in my arena. It, it, it instill, it keeps you away from here, <laughs> from the present, <laughs> from now, from this. It's an interesting one because we talked at the beginning of the week about some people are uh, channeling or prophesizing or just sharing what they feel is coming and some of them have been spot on some of them were used to be spot on and now you're like yeah well you said this will happen and it didn't happen uh, but the interesting thing is i still do listen to some of them those who actually um, are not so super specific and are talking about the positive side of things. 
because we're being bombarded with so much negativity. So I personally use their positivity to balance a little bit the input I'm getting. Mm. Because if you go on any platform, you're overloaded either with irrelevant crap or with a lot of negativity about what's going on in the world now and how it's all going to end us and we're going to die or we're going to turn into robots or... Or, or, or the Nazis are, are coming back just with a different label. It's, it's a lot of crap. And also a lot of doom thinking and doom prediction. Yeah, and... And, 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 and I understand that. Yeah? Please go. No, I, agree. I, I might forget. The, the key word I have is the should be or need to. If the speaker is saying should be, need to, or this group is the only one ascending and this is descending you go to, we go to heaven you go to hell sorry that's that's a crappy message because you're you're playing i, I don't know it, it's just absurd how can you sep how can you separate it's it because this is a dream of separation this separation is an illusion and how sure are you that this group of people is the one the goat and the sheep it's like the bible it's like the catholic bible in your different variation so but but that's not wrong or right it's the expression of that source in that specific in that specific expression but it it just doesn't sound it just doesn't it it, it, it just doesn't fit to how what life is <laughs> because life is benevolent in life is but but they I, I they're just playing role. That's just, that's just the the thing I I, I, I say. They they play their role. Then I'm not taking it seriously. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, I think because I, it's all about division. I mean, um, I'm laughing now because in the Bible they're talking about the chosen uh, nation, which are the Jews, uh, who are sent through the desert for forty years. Long live uh, Google Maps because you can cross that desert in a few days if you just follow basic. Uh, where's the sun? Okay, we need to go to the to the east, and um, and then went to the chosen land. And then today, they are definitely not chosen because they should have been protected, and they're not. So they keep taking more and more and more and number four needs to come now i'm like wow weren't you the chosen people in the chosen land so something is wrong in your story and in your belief system in the belief system of uh, over a billion people and yeah some people may get upset when i say this but hey i'm not inventing this this is what what's written in the <laughs> book of truth <laughs> And I'm like, okay, interesting, different perspective. So maybe you misinterpreted something. Yeah, because it's all about polarity. Like we're better and they're bad. Or, or, or like I saw in that same episode of Young Sheldon, the guy said, when he went to this Jewish guy, like, okay, he said, ah, we tend to get punished by God. I was like, okay, so you're not that good then. <laughs> if God keeps punishing you guys, then there must be something wrong with you guys. <laughs> so of course it crossed my mind, like, Oh, so Hitler maybe was not that bad. If God has been punishing you for centuries and then Hitler wanted to punish you too. So a lot of people may get very upset now. But yeah, I'm, I'm allowed to make this joke because it's about division and polarity saying one group is better than another because you were born from, from a certain lineage or in a certain country or your parents believed something like you're a Jew automatically when your mom is a Jew. And in Islam, you're normally a Muslim if your father is a Muslim. So... I mean, I'm me. What my mom was, what my father was, will not determine who I am. I will choose what I want. And no matter how much they were or were not, uh, uh, how to say, uh, preaching division or unity, I will do what I feel best. Yes, yes. So yes. I can be a total racist or I can be a unifier or a mix of both. Because yeah. most of us are racist in a way or another, 
if we really pay attention to all the choices we made, there's a high chance that someone like, yeah, I was kind of racist there because of an experience, because of a story, because what I was fed and you realize like, hmm, actually this is not so nice. But you can also take off the label of, of discrimination, just say, hey, I made a bad choice, which was based on a previous experience. I was not in the moment aligned with my soul and my heart and didn't feel what I had to do there or how I had to interact with that person. But that is spirituality, knowing in the moment. The, my grand-grandfather from my father's side was an imam. And he did hide the Jews during the Second World War. A Muslim hiding the Jews. Ooh, strange, right? No, he was a truly spiritual man who helped those who needed help. And he didn't go to fight. His son, my grandfather, went to fight till death. That was his way. That's also some kind of polarity. And then my father... He has been in the middle of both, helping people, fighting some people, and always wanting justice. But justice is also, in a certain way, polarity. Because what the law says, or what the rules say, is not always good morality. Good and bad is also polarity, of course. So we keep going in circles with, with polarity. But you can say, what do you feel to yeah. do in the moment? And yeah, the rules may say, yeah, oh, those are rules, you need to do that. Or it's okay because the rule, the law says, so it's okay to do that. Sorry, but it was legal to, to, to deport the Jews and, and make them slaves. It was legal. Uh, black slavery was legal. Um, there were so many things that were legal at a certain period in time, but it didn't mean it was good. Most women today would get really upset if they would go back 100 years because it was illegal for them to vote, illegal for them to have certain jobs. It was the law. Doesn't make it good or doesn't make it today bad. It's just, what do people choose? Because some women are not happy with how society is today with them having to be exactly like men. Do the same thing. I mean, they have, people have the same expectation from women as they have from men and vice versa. That's not great for everyone so there again it's about choose what feels good for you yeah yeah so that, that, yeah go ahead that, that's that's that 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 alone is enough message for you because if you're doing what you're what what makes you happy and you're not hurting anybody that's enough you don't need that saving others or helping others because that will follow if you're happy with your life and you're not hurting others, it, it everything will follow because right now there's a lot of people, you know, Alan Watts quotes, he said like, the goody goodies are the thieves of virtue, <laughs> trying to save the fish from drowning in the water. <laughs> it's like these people who have this savior complex, I'm going to save you from your sins. I'm going to save you because you're a wretched, broken person. And uh, you're not realizing, how do you know? He didn't even ask your opinion, something like that. I just feel like there's a lot of that right now. You talk about I, yourself, right? Back in uh, the days. You talk about yourself yeah. now, back in the days, right? Yeah, that's me, that's me. That savior complex of, I'm, the, I'm part of the 144,000 light worker chosen by the source. And then th there are, you know, there, this is one of the most ridiculous phrases separated from the source how can you separate from yourself you are the source you, you, the, because it, because the mind is percept perceiving things it's only the mind that separates but in reality that's the cosmic joke if, if you see the cosmic joke that there's no separation that you are not just the limited mind you, but but that's just life you know that's life as it is I, you cannot paint it differently because without this it this will not exist i mean without the without the sinner there won't be a saint without good there won't be bad but in the grander scheme of things there's no good and bad there's no you or me 
there's just one <laughs> you know it, that's why it's just a play people like misunderstand me when i say these things because because it's it it, it sounds lunatic <laughs> it sounds crazy but this is how i this is how it's in this this is how i see it <laughs> and there's just i don't know i but i right now uh, there's no more like there's no baggage with, with i just find it uh i just it's like it's just like reading a cos a comic book <laughs> when i see people projecting uh, the future uh, prophesizing the future or uh giving messages of hope or giving messages of fear <laughs> It's 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 so it's like when you're watching a movie and your your the scene is scary, but you're not affected that much because you know that that doesn't have anything to do with who you really are. Oh. But what you said summarizes it, like just feel what you want to do at the moment, and that everything will follow. Like you're not forcing it or you're not because that that's what we're trained in religion you do you do because it's in written in the book <laughs> it there's a prerequisite for you to be accepted <laughs> how whole society is not just religion yeah the, yeah yeah exactly <laughs> you do because everyone else is doing it or because your teacher told you to to or your parents told you or just follow the herd and thinking for yourself is, is a sin. Although companies have been screaming that they want people who can think think on their own, but then when it comes to it, they just want drones to obey, who obey. And rare are the companies who really give their employees the space to actually be creative and come mm -hmm. up with new ways of doing something. Not just inventing new things, but just different ways of doing things. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, what is it that you recommend people to do if they hear us now and they're like, okay, I'm in a certain situation, I don't really like it, and I have family and society who are pushing me in a certain direction, but I'm not sure that's the right direction. What would you recommend? Just your perspective on it. <laughs> I mean, I'm asking you because you have gone through this yourself. So can you share some yeah, I'll, I'll, ideas, I'll, I'll, some tips? No, I, I think I, I'll start with how, how it happened to me. And you can see it from there because if if it's a procedure i there's no procedure to how life would be because the only procedure if there is if there is is what you want for yourself <laughs> the rest is opinion i mean it look at it this is how it happened to me and you can say whatever <laughs> because i have friends who have i, I see it myself have been and they are, they are healthy they are thriving and i have friends also who are back who had been and they they weren't they weren't doing well so i i thought that was at, at the beginning of 2020 i was so confused like why did you give me a set of friends with two opposing sides and and that was a blessing indeed because when you realize it doesn't matter whatever it what only matters it what is what you want to <laughs> it 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 it's so ingrained this is this the time where it's us versus them don't take the it, you will have low frequency there's so much label there's so much stories attached to it but ultimately it whatever whatever happens to the body mind organism even if you die from disease or even if because from experience that unexplainable bliss never left 
because I'm sure that's your true that's my true nature <laughs> even if I die even if even if this physical body disappears your need your nature will, because it changes <laughs> You, you notice your thoughts earlier is different from right now and you you didn't do anything it just comes and goes we are talking right now but you don't notice your breath because you're not doing your breathing it's it just happens so it, it doesn't have anything to do with you so you will never make mistake even if at the moment it seems like a mistake later on it will make sense it it, it the universe is benevolent i i i, I want to see it as that foundation <laughs> even if people are spreading fear or you're in a re rigid religion right now or your family sees you differently <laughs> because i know that's one of the problems when you're in a different perspective your family sees you as the black sheep <laughs> you're di you're thinking create you're crazy or something like that it's part of the the game but when you see it as a game they're just you're just playing it you're just maybe i don't know it it will unfold exactly as it should just like the movie <laughs> you know it it there's 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 this magic of life where <laughs> things will unfold but there's really no procedure there's really no how to there's really no tip but like what you said you said it earlier what what do you feel in your heart at the moment follow your bliss <laughs> And it, it's easy to listen to people, especially if you're a good speaker, or you say, I channel the ninth dimensional celestial beings, and this is their message. It's easy to follow that. And, and then you forget that you, you are the freedom. It's not the opinion outside. You. <laughs> it, it, the good, the fear narrative can also be a, the extremely beautiful narrative where you are the light you are the savior of the universe and it can also trap you into <laughs> to another bubble but but it's not a mistake it's just play <laughs> so you will not make a mistake no matter what happens <laughs> it, it it will it will serve whatever it's gonna serve something like that <laughs> and you, you you said it very well like whatever you feel is good for you that's the best thing <laughs> yeah but you need to get to that feeling part by the way you have something ticking next to you or not here when you're speaking here tick 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 ah, tick, tick tick i don't know it's something plastic or so um it took me a while before i could do that and that was more what i was my intention with the question but then i'll give my perspective on it um what helped me was grounding and meditation and not the very boring kind of meditation like sitting in a difficult position and like, mm, no it's more about the calming down and i have different ways of doing it and i have my website i have a whole segment for that and I have um, guided meditations that people can listen to, but also on the grounding, how to ground, and there are different ways of doing that. There is a physical, the emotional, the spiritual. And it all comes to silencing the mind, calming down, and that's how we can actually connect better to the heart and to the soul and hear the inner voice also be more aware of what our body is telling us so when we feel like real pain somewhere it's our body screaming at us because we haven't treated it well in one way or the other and it's screaming now but it was already giving us signals earlier but we, we ignored them or we could not hear them because the mind was like wah, 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 all the time oh, all the time ah oh, now first you need to do this need to, then i need to do that and, and later 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 and postponing postponing and taking some vitamins or medication or whatever and just keep going and we're ignoring our bodies but we need our bodies to actually have the whole bloody experience here on earth us dying is our body dying so end of experience here on earth my dog <laughs> She wants to drink. 
So I opened the door. <laughs> yeah, you have a very cute dog. So that is my recommendation. That's how I did it. And when I teach, because I, I teach courses as well, when I teach, uh, for example, the grounding course, which is grounding, cleaning, recharging, and shielding, I do not say you need to do it like this and that. I share different ways of doing these different things. And then I encourage people to practice and to try out and find their own unique way of doing things. Mm. Because we're all different. We all have our, our ways of doing something, our limitations maybe, uh, or already certain abilities. So it's logical that you look, you taste, and in the end you do your own thing. It's like when somebody gives you a recipe or you eat at somebody's place something, you go, know, wow, it's amazing. How did you do it? I did either up like that. And you hear how they did it. And then later you're like, ah, but I'm going to change that a little bit and put a little bit more of that because I like that more. And so it's already a different meal. And a lot of people, they cook without following recipes. They just know what needs to be in there. And then every time they cook, it's slightly different because of the moment or because of their mood or because of who's visiting. So less spicy or more salty or whatever. And that is important. And it's a total opposite as from what we were discussing earlier, when, for example, a religion or society or a government saying, yo, you need to be like this. Mm, yeah. I do it exactly <laughs> like that. Otherwise you're bad, very bad doesn't work like that. It used to work maybe in the past because people were slaves. And still today, majority of humanity is still just living in slavery. It has a different name, different label, but in the end, people are slaves. They're going to a job they hate, or they may like the work, but the boss is shitty, or they have the wrong hours, or they're getting paid very little while they feel they're worth much more. And they're doing it be because they need to pay the bills, which is also something set up by society, which they would never have chosen. Like in many countries now, and the number is increasing, going to school costs money. You want to go to university, you need to take a loan, but it should be a basic human right to be able to study if you want to learn something, but no, you need to take a heavy loan and later you need to pay off that loan and you will get punished if you don't. So you're already, already a slave. So you're going to take whatever job just to start paying off, uh, paying back that damn loan. So you're a slave again. You're doing something you don't want to do because you're being forced. And I personally believe that all this will change in the future. And that we will move to a society where people will do what they feel to do from passion. So laziness will not exist anymore because rare are the people who have zero passion. A lot of people don't know yet what they're passionate are about because they never got the chance, they never were asked or they never had the space to actually do it because they were going through life school, primary school, secondary school, university, and then the job to start to pay off the debts. And they, they had sex with somebody. And so they got pregnant. And so they need to make money to be able to survive. So they keep going. And they never got to actually sit and feel like, what do I actually love to do? What, what really makes me happy? And that's why you see a lot of people when they turn 50 and they have maybe been very successful in the business world and they just stop and like, what the hell have you been doing this? I earned so much money, but actually I would have loved to spend more time with my kids and I never saw them grow up. Or I even lost my family because I was only busy with work because it was always this next deadline, this next target, this next deal, this next whatever. And I'm like, wow. And then they, they go and they do something completely different where they earn often much less money or suddenly they start to earn much more money than ever before because they're doing something they love. And they change. As human beings, they change. They become more fun, they're less tired, they're less cranky, 
they're more friendly. Um, they start to really inspire people and they get a lot of people who start to follow them and, and who join them in their initiatives. Just like I joined this NGO that I'm supporting because the people working there are very passionate about it. They're happy. So their passion touches something in me. And that's why I'm helping. I'm not doing it because they help me or because they pay me. Or, no, I'm doing it just because I feel from in here. That's why I was late today for our call, because I, when I came home relatively late, I still had to shower because I literally had black stripes on my face from all the boxes I had been carrying was, was, was huge. The packages we, we got four pallets of boxes and, and it was amazing to see how many volunteers came with the cars and we could fill up the cars so they could go and distribute. It was a pleasure. Not just to see them, but also to see, yeah, you're also still supporting, you're doing that. And, and, and I can already visualize the faces of the people that they will make, make happy when they arrive somewhere. They're like Santa Claus arriving somewhere, so they give away the boxes of food, and people will be happy. And then it doesn't matter what's in the boxes. People are happy when they have nothing and they receive something. That somebody comes and drives sometimes for an hour or even two hours to a remote area and brings something. And that's here. That's not here. That's not in the wallet. It's in here. It's a connection. Connection with people. It's the unity. I forgot who was it who came up with socialism and who came up with communism. But those were ideologies, but humanity was not ready. So these ideas failed. Also, capitalism failed. They're all about connection and unity from, viewed from different perspectives, but they failed because nobody's working from here. Capitalism is fine when people work from here. Communism is fine when people work from here. It's not fine when people are not working from here, doing because they have to do, being slaves or cheating the system. That's why all the systems, all the social system, economical systems failed. Certain rich people say, no, 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 of course, because you ended up on a certain side, but are you truly happy? Most rich people that I know are not really happy. Rare are the people who are rich who are happy, you have a higher chance to find a poor person who's happy than, than finding a rich person who's happy. And just look at the kids. The kids of rich people, generally, they're not happy. They're lost because they, they get everything. They never had to really do an effort to get something or to discover what they wanted when they thought, ah, oh, this is nice. Boom, they got 10 of it. Ah, oh, that's nice. Boom, they got 10 of that. Where poor kids would really enjoy having this one little broken toy but then they had something. And then they had the imagination to play with it. So also kids who have so many toys, they're generally not happy because they're not playing with all those toys. And they see other kids are really happy they have, they have two toys that are, that, that are half broken, but they're playing with it, they're having fun. So I believe with the changes that are happening, with people waking up, people are going more inwards and start to act from there. And I'm gonna be honest, I myself, I'm still searching. I've been searching for most of my life. Often I thought like, yay, yeah, now I found it. And after some time, hmm, hmm, hmm. And yeah, I had a few jobs which I really liked. Most of the time I didn't like my job or didn't like my boss or I was doing the wrong thing like the kind of job could have been nice if it would have been a different area. So there was always something because it was not from here. And even with the coaching, I've had periods where I was not in the mood to coach because I was getting people on my path. I was like, oh, this is really not fun to work with this kind of people. And so I had to determine for myself, what do I want? What kind of people I want to work with, for example? It does come from here. It's not about the money, but what I feel in here. 
some of the people I've worked with, I worked with through charity, so I didn't get paid for it. And I had much more fun working with them than some people who paid me very well. Because these people are motivated and the others were not motivated. They were just paying me a lot of money and I had the feeling I was wasting my time and their time and their money even. Yeah, thank you for the money. It's nice, but did I feel fulfilled? No, because they didn't move forward, not even half a step. Not because I'm not a good coach. No, because they were not, they just could buy the service, but were not motivated. So maybe these people should have charged 10 times the price because then it would have been a big effort for them. Then they would have had to go back and sit and like, okay, is this worth it? Do I really want that? And that's when you start to go in here. Do I really want that thing? Because it's really expensive. And that's why, for example, my tariffs, there are poorer countries, people pay less and richer countries, people pay more. Otherwise, people will not take it seriously. You pay penis, you get monkeys, they say. Well, if, 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 if somebody in the Netherlands pays 25 euros for half an hour with me, you think, ah, it's nothing. Here locally, it's a reasonable amount. But if somebody in the Netherlands pays 250 euros to sit half an hour with me, they will be very focused and concentrated. They will not be busy on the phone or come late or no, they will be in time because we start at 11 o'clock and 11.30, I close. So if you're late, ah, I booked that half hour, you're paying for that half hour. So they will, they will, they will come 10 minutes early just to be sure. And then I may let them let them in 10, 10 minutes early and they get 40 minutes. But because they were on time, because they were motivated, they did an effort. And when there is this interaction, then I don't look on the clock unless I have another appointment. But that's because there is there, there is this, there's a connection, there's communication, there's interaction. And then the energy starts to flow. And that is what we need in society. More of it. But for that, you need to go inwards and connect with yourself first. And then connect with the outside world. You wanted to say something. I saw you move your lips no, no. to say something. My, my dog is... <laughs> because my dog just uh, knocked. I, I'm just gonna... Yeah, yeah, open the door for him. Okay. <laughs> he has a knocking dog. Knock, knock. Can I enter? Knock, knock. Can I go out? Catch the <laughs> scratch on the door. But your dog, he knocks apparently. Wow, how did you train him on that? When she's thirsty, she wakes me up in the middle of the night. And then I'm going to wait for her to drink. She's going to knock back. <laughs> then we sleep again. <laughs> but can you not just put a, a bowl of water where she sleeps? She doesn't drink the water in here. She 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 has a specific place outside where she... <laughs> her preference. <laughs> okay, you have one of these dogs who's like, Hey, I want to be served. Hey, butler. Open the door, get me my special water, get me my food, clean my shit. Oh, it has a bell, ping, ping. Time to clean my shit, go. I saw That's this picture. You... It's so sorry, was, yeah, okay, tell me, yes, yes. I will tell you the joke no. after. <laughs> no, I was, telling, I was about to tell you the, the joke where, are you really the master or the dog? <laughs> <laughs> ah, that's a good one. I had one on the cats that this old Egyptian cat is talking to the current modern cat here in the West, like, hey, are you still being seen as gods? Well, they're, uh, they're feeding me and cleaning my shit. Oh, good, good, good. <laughs> yeah. Perspective. <laughs> exactly. To close the loop back to perspective yeah exactly and whatever whoever if you're watching this there's no right way or wrong way you can even oppose both of what we're saying <laughs> but even what everything is happening oh, exactly you say that okay keep going keep going <laughs> because i i 
it's it's normal the mind likes that that's the mind maze the mind likes that making sense <laughs> oh the, the, what this guy is saying is baloney <laughs> this guy is is not good and if if you just whatever you know <laughs> you, you just do what what you think is best <laughs> it's funny how when you look at the picture you with black and white like super polarity <laughs> and then you have the line in the middle goes orange it's like <laughs> so you're like literally in a black and white recording like like mm -hmm. your camera doesn't have color and i'm color <laughs> And in, in your black and and in your non-color, it's also black and white, like almost a line in the middle. <laughs> it's really funny talking about polarities today. Yeah, that 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 was also our our topic last time, <laughs> the first podcast, and that's yeah. Apparently, funny. it's needed mm. because there's a lot of polarity going on in the world, mm. and people getting more and more polar. Even the people who who were on one side against the rest, now that among them others are also getting opposites and polarized. So those who love to create division in the world, they're doing an amazing job because even the spiritual people now are fighting each other. So everyone is fighting everyone. The spiritual yeah. are fighting the non-spiritual, but the spiritual are fighting the spiritual, and the non-spiritual are fighting the non-spiritual. But that has been gone for going on forever, and <laughs> those believing in the same one God also fighting each other, not just the Jews and the Muslims or the Jews and the Christians or no no Muslims and Muslims uh, Christians and Christians because ah no but that you're Orthodox oh no you you're Catholic oh no you're Protestant you're whatever other thing I mean it's everywhere is this polarity and and maybe you're looking at this like oh fuck religion I'm anti-religion okay you're polar polarizing as well you're anti-religion <laughs> yeah that that's the yeah Jed McKenna said the crazier the world gets the easier it is to wake up because without that craziness you will not see it differently I'm just I'm the confused one watching the show I'm watching the shit show I'm not the savior of the light worker playing that savior complex but if you want to play that game fine but you know the the light passing through the prism how can that light be separated? It's just playing different characters. Actually, playing... if you hold the light, hold it for a moment. Yeah, it's actually being split already in different colors. Yeah, 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 oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's just one light. It's just one source. So if you see that cosmic joke, it, it will. But yeah, I like what you said. <laughs> Everyone's fighting. <laughs> but Everyone's... what you said about the craziness, it's also what's happening now with what's happening now in the world. And I don't want to use certain words. Otherwise, YouTube will start to do stupid things with the video. So maybe you need to beep you when you talked about this. So I need to go back in the video. So it's more editing. Oh, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. A lot of extra work. Mm. Uh, oh, yeah. Yeah. Um, so all this craziness that's going on is getting really crazy and people really looking like but why are they saying this and then they're saying that and why they're taking away this from me and taking away that from me and that is needed for people actually to wake up it's true because people start to question because things are not i mean when you go gradually and every time you take away one little piece of people's freedom then People will get used to it. But now things are going so fast because everything is going fast. People are like, hey, wait. Only a few weeks ago, I had so much more freedom or whatever it was. So, so people are feeling the change happening and they're like, but this doesn't feel good. There's no time for adaptation. So that's the benefit now. It's getting crazy and crazy, crazy and boom. It's like, like this wheel that's going so fast, at a certain moment, the, the system cannot hold it when, it when it rotates too fast. Everything starts to vibrate too much and then puff, it breaks. And that is what's gonna happen, what I feel. Oh, now, now I'm telling the future. 
I mean, it's logical. You see it in every, just look back at history. When one country got crazier and crazier, more and more powerful, it collapsed. Just look at the US. They're investing so much more money than a few years ago in the military and stuff, but they're losing grip on the world. And that's why they're investing so much more. They're, I think they're investing more like 10 times what they used to invest. And the US military budget is, is bigger than, I don't know, the next how many countries military budgets. Because the US is collapsing. They're losing grip on the world. They can still have a big mouth, but they're losing. And the Chinese are coming, but people not accept how the Chinese are doing. The Russians are pushing because they want to come back, but they're also not, not, not going to succeed because nobody wants to be told what to do, how to think, how to walk, how to eat, how to sit. No. People want freedom. So all the, they will all collapse. But if you look back at the history, the Chinese Empire collapsed, the British Empire collapsed, the Roman Empire collapsed. And they all collapsed when they started to get um, overconfident. When they thought, ah, but we're so strong, nobody can do anything else to, to us. So we can do whatever we want. So we just do this, we do that. And then they started to get, get beaten up. Just like the Germans. Why did, did the Germans lose the war? Why was there even a World War II? Because they got overconfident. If they would have gone slower, we would have all been speaking German in all of Europe, maybe except for the UK. But they, they were over enthusiastic. They started to take, uh, what was it, um, ecstasy. Mm -hmm. So they could go faster and faster and faster, but that was short term, good results, which had long term bad results or even mid term bad results. So, yeah, of course. So, yeah, lucky us. That they were so eager and over and, and going so fast because that's how they collapsed and that's how why so many people stood up to them they would have gone slow you would have had the german empire like the roman empire was enveloping a big part of the world and we're seeing the same happening now with everything that's happening now all the craziness in the world people are like yeah pff, screw it i'm not in the mood for this crap anymore or what's going on? What's really going on? So yeah, the craziness is good. It's just part of the transformation. It's like when you go from infant to adult, you go through puberty. For most, most teenagers, it's one big chaos. Hormone-wise, emotionally, everything. You're not a child, you're not an adult, you're somewhere in the middle and you're supposed to behave in a certain way, but you still feel another way. And I mean, it's, 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 it's 10, 15 years of, because it can be really that long because when you're 18, you're not done with adolescence. You're still not, a, not, not an adult, a real adult, probably from 25 ish up to 30, maybe from 30, you start to become slowly an adult. And yeah, it's a period of chaos because it's transformation. And for some people, you have a real reset. Like I had a reset in certain parts of my, my life, not just one, but in certain parts. And that means everything comes to a stop and then you start over. That's what you do with the computer. But as a human being in, in life, you cannot have a reset in everything. So society is going through transformation. And each of us is going through transformation. Like renewing the cells in our bodies, not just we go to sleep and then during the night everything is decomposing and new cells are built. No, constantly there are new cells growing and old cells being, uh, yeah, destroyed and and cleaned out. And then it takes I don't know how many weeks, and then we're completely a new person again, compared to before that moment. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have any last words? No, I, or a I, I, question I, you want to pump into there so to blow people's minds? 
<laughs> Question nobody has the answer to, but people might think they have an answer. We'll just put up a thing. <laughs> I don't know. Just ask just just any, ask. any any last words then, yeah? Yeah. Well, if, Go ahead. if you're gonna ask a question, you ask who's asking the question. Because if you really ask who's asking the question, you, you have to find out. Either that's how it, it, it was for me. Ask who is really asking the question. <laughs> because the question where is this where is the question coming from? And uh, you find your find the answer there. <laughs> But really, there, there is no formula to for a better or quality life. The quality of your life right now is the best life because <laughs> the only thing comparing is the mind. It, it can compare like her life is better than me, her process is better than me, but the fact that you're experiencing it now, it's the best, it's the best experience. <laughs> Either I... No, and then and you, you you can go all the way if you want. That's what happened to me. I I didn't stop with religion. I didn't stop with New Age. I went to non-duality. I attended all the Zoom meetings of non-duality, satsangs, Advaita Vedanta, the Upanishads. I and you and then channeling the extraterrestrial. I I explored all the avenues and. I went back to myself because ultimately these concepts dissolve and you remain. <laughs> these concepts will disappear in time, but your real nature will stay. <laughs> you will exist for for whatever, <laughs> you know. <laughs> and I, I like this talk. It's just a free flowing non we have no format. <laughs> Non no it was spontaneous your i like your flow of we're just exchanging the flow what what you're saying and the here maybe yeah, that's you can me also... being myself yeah so that's how i am in conversation with people in general yeah <laughs> early also with, with 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 a friend of mine at the ngo we were talking about something and then we ended up in talking about something <laughs> completely different and then was like okay let's go back because i still didn't get an answer on that first thing but we we went it was an important second topic that we entered it was really important to go through that but i also was still curious about what was the answer to the first thing but mm. that's that's how it goes yeah so after this call i will have a talk as a result of that second subject that we <laughs> we slid into in that conversation so uh yeah it's it, it, it's how things go um i have a question actually for the viewers and that is what are you truly passionate about it's nice um the thing that that, that you will get up early in the morning for or you will stay up late for the thing that really gives you that unlimited amount of energy uh and and make you feel good and make you make yeah let you let, let you do let, let you do the things or or or, or gets you much further in the results than anything else what's the thing that you really feel passionate about yeah. and generally it's not the job that you have generally it's not your kids um it can be related to one of these two topics but it's something that you had in you before you had the job before you had your kids before you were married before you graduated before you studied the passion is something deep inside you and i would really love if you could put that in the comments and maybe that will inspire me to invite you for a talk or or or, or use that topic to make a video or something else but Jenny, all my videos and all my, my calls are an inspiration because I read something, I heard something, I saw something and then, oh, wait, uh, there is something I would like to talk about. And then yeah. it starts to come. Wow. Especially in my last two videos, uh, they were also like that. I just saw something like, oh, okay, subject, go. And I recorded two videos in a row. Nice, yeah. Um, that's a good question 
And that's really a good question. You, you said it. That what's your what are you passionate about? And on my mind, when you ask that, when you ask the question, you can also without this. Ah, what are you passionate about? And without the concept of success that society has implanted, you know, <laughs> because you can answer it in a way that's still in the programming. But you can answer it in infinite ways. <laughs> like there's no good and bad. Like if I, if I, if you ask me that, and then I told you like I'm passionate about sex, then there's it's not taboo. It that's what's I'm that's what I'm passionate about. What what's wrong with that? We're sexual beings. I'm passionate about playing with my dogs. <laughs> it, it you can answer it infinitely. <laughs> it, it it it's not it's not limited to job or but you can also answer it with job. <laughs> you can also say I'm passionate about being a CEO, <laughs> you know, <laughs> anything. <laughs> this is infinite. Yeah, but then I would immediately ask what <laughs> in being a CEO is really feeding you? And it can be uh I mean it can be more abstract like uh, inspiring people or making a difference or transforming something or I mean there are so many if you go deeper if every time you're like okay but wh what's behind that what's at the core of that thing and you go deeper and deeper so it's okay to start with you with the job title that's fine but that's not the answer I want to see because why what's in that job is really and, and, and what about that thing within that job is really, so it's going deeper and deeper until something comes from here. And uh, what you described earlier about um, the complex you said you had, like that you want to help everyone or something like that. Not oh, the savior complex. Yeah, the savior the... complex. That can be, already an answer that comes behind a few levels behind whatever you're doing today and then my question would be okay you want to save people what's behind that why do you want to save people then you go deeper again and that's how you get to the true passion maybe you get first through a wound because you felt you needed saving when you were young or so and you didn't get it so now you want to help others or like people who have been addicts are now helping addict, addicted people because they got out of it and they want to help others. But there can be different motives behind that. So I'm always curious to keep going back and back and back and deeper, deeper, deeper till you come to the core. And I think in the end of the core, when you go behind everything else, you, you come back to love. It's love translate it in and then something comes out of it so don't write the word love i want the next level just above love <laughs> because otherwise everyone will write love i mean assuming that everyone is actually doing the work and going deeper and deeper and deeper till you come to love but it would be interesting to see if you can come actually to love because then you know you really went all the way down. That, that's from my perspective how it works. Somebody else may have a completely different view on it, on how to dig and to go deeper or not to dig at all, fine. But this is my question, so. <laughs> so I really wanna thank you very much for this spontaneous conversation. Yeah, I wanna thank you too because I felt so happy talking to you, listening to your expression of 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 life. <laughs> it, it it it's just free flowing. It's not rigid. It's I I just like what you said. The connection, <laughs> the connection is is there. Otherwise, we we wouldn't have done this. <laughs> this wouldn't have happened. And I I enjoyed it. I didn't even notice it was an hour or more, maybe. <laughs> Actually, I don't know what time we started. So, yeah. <laughs> so I assume it's been an hour now. But um, yeah, I think an hour and a half. Ah, you see, okay. <laughs> so. Yeah, people may now be able to look because we don't have a timer. So people watching, they're like, ah, you don't talk for, okay. 
well, <laughs> I will know after this is being uh, processed. So, yeah, I really appreciate. Hmm? What? You're going to bleep some of my. <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, yeah, the bleeps, yes. I need to find something to make the bleep, and then that's so why I need to Google somewhere bleep. And then, <laughs> and I find where you said that, and I have no clue, but okay, I'll find it. Oh, no, you know what? I'll just send you the video raw and you can search for it. Okay. Why well, you dare to use those words that I have to bleep? Sure, sure. No, seriously, I really appreciate um, how open you are and, and that how you talk from your heart and also use all the perspectives that you got throughout the years through your own hard work on yourself. And, and that, that's why I keep inviting you to, to, to certain talks or group talks or one-on-ones because yeah, it's, it inspires me and I know it inspires other people too. So I'm like, yeah, that's, that's how, how things work. Yeah. <laughs> so all the viewers, thank you for watching. Check out the links in the description, uh, put a like, share, um, suggest a topic or send us a message that you actually want to have a talk with one of us because Leonard, you also do interviews, right? If people go to your channel, they will see that you have talks with people as well. You have monologues, but also interviews or yeah. conversations with people. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. also on very, very different topics. So people have a look and uh, yeah, I hope we have been able to inspire you or trigger you, put you to think uh put you to actually sit a moment and I'll write down in the comments what your passion is and see you in the next one have a beautiful day everyone like subscribe and share